YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Kuzi. Welcome back to our complete Phasmophobia equipment series. In this installment, we are covering the spirit box, all right? I'm covering all the tiers, which one I think is the best, and a couple different tips and tricks you gotta know about how to use it, as well as uh, covering all the ghosts that require spirit box evidence, okay? Let's jump straight into it, baby. Alrighty, so we are back on Tanglewood. I'm gonna be on Tanglewood for this series, just for the sake of uh, consistency. And this is like my safe space in Phasmo. Um, let me know what your favorite map is, by the way, in the comments. Uh, so this is the spirit box, okay? This is a tier one. You get it for free. Uh, it is completely uh, useless um, because it's just, it's very bad, okay? One common thing you're gonna notice about this series, the majority of tier one items are complete booty butt cheeks, but it's what you start out with. They're free, so it's it's what's been given to us at no extra cost to us, right? Here's how you use it, right? You have it in your hand, and then you usually want to use it after you find the ghost room, okay? Um, but if it's a situation where like you're dealing with a demon and you walk in and the ghost does like a ghost event right off the rib, you can actually go to the ghost where the ghost appeared and use the spirit box and actually test for spirit box evidence that way too. But what you want to do is hypothetically, let's say that this room is the ghost room, all right? What a lot of people fuck up on, they go in and they try to use the spirit box right now where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? How did you die? Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I don't understand why it's not giving me spirit box. You've got all the other two evidence that you need. And you know for a fact that it's a specific ghost, like a mayor or twins or something that requires spirit box. And you're not getting spirit box. Well, uh, my friend, turn off the light, okay? Because if you turn off the light, that is the only way the ghost is going to respond to you on the spirit box. You have to be in the ghost room. If you're playing on a lower setting, like amateur or intermediate, you will uh, find on the board or in your journal in the overview section, this response to section. Uh, on amateur and intermediate, it'll say response to people who are alone or response to everyone. That is useful for the spirit box. So, but a good rule of thumb is to just go into the ghost room alone if you're checking for spirit box and just be in there alone. If you're if you're a little too scared, that's okay. You can have your friend just like stand right outside of the ghost room, but they have to be just outside of the threshold. Otherwise, if they're like, if they have their big toe past the threshold here, then the ghost is gonna be like, there's more than one person in here. I talked to just one person on the spirit box. I'm out, bro, right? You're not getting spirit box for me. So just go in alone. Then you can either ask questions using your voice or you can go to options, go to audio, change your voice input mode to not toggle, uh, game actually, voice recognition mode, sorry, and change from windows to text. And if you do that, if you turn on your spirit box, you will now have a text to speech where you can ask, you can just click all these things, right? And it's not in here, obviously, this is not the ghost room, but it did turn on a light somewhere. It turned on this light, so we're gonna check in here. But I'm gonna ask a question and pay attention to the spirit box right here. Where are you? Are you here? Are you friendly? Are you close? How old are you? Okay, so you saw that next to, I don't know how well you can see it, but next to the uh, ghost icon, a little red light popped up. So you have the power button or the power light and then just to the right of that, you have your mic input. So I have push to talk on. So this is uh, picking up my mic. Um, and then if the ghost hears you, that indicates that you either are in the ghost room and the ghost either doesn't have spirit box. The ghost is just choosing to ignore you or quite the opposite. You're not in the ghost room. You're not meeting the proper criteria for the ghost to respond to you. Like you're not in the ghost room. Uh, there's too many people in the room, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So if you get that, then, um, maybe try confirming that it is the ghost room, et cetera, and, uh, go from there. But yeah, so just make sure that the lights are off. You can use text to speech instead of like your actual voice. If you don't want to actually ask the questions. Um, and Make sure you go into the ghost room alone if you are checking for spirit box. Okay, so we are back on Tanglewood with the tier two now. And as you can see, this is already a much better thing. You have a nice big display screen that shows you the actual radio frequencies that it's scanning. Uh, you got your mic input in the top left corner. Uh, if you ask a question, instead of it being a red light, uh, this X will pop up. So let's, I heard a window knock right here, I think. Where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Close. Close. There you go. 
And unlike on the tier one and what you're gonna see here in a moment, the tier three, where the red light responds to you whenever you're not meeting the criteria like I just covered, the ghost icon will actually pop up. Whereas if you're not in the ghost room, so let's go, let's go in here. Where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? Are you, the X will pop up. These are all of the ghosts that, that have spirit box evidence. So if you are on professional or lower difficulty, amateur through professional, you will get three evidences. These ghosts will for sure have this, okay? Now, if you play on higher difficulties where the ghosts will hide evidence from you, to be completely transparent, I'm not too well versed on the ghosts that require specific evidence for it to be that ghost, but I do know the Eugen requires spirit box as well as the Moroi. And speaking of those ghosts, I wanna touch on a couple of the ghosts that have some special interactions with the sphere box. So for instance, the Diogen. If you are standing right on top of the Diogen in the ghost room, you will get a special sphere box response. If the Moroi responds to you on the sphere box, it will place a curse on you or whoever uses the sphere box. Excuse me. I'm in the middle of working here, thank you. What that means is as soon as it responds to you, your sanity will begin to drop rapidly. So if you get a spirit box response, you can run out to the truck and if your sanity, so that's right here, this is how I know we're not dealing with the Moroi because if it was a Moroi and I was under the Moroi curse, uh, my sanity would probably be closer to like 70 right now, 70, 60 or 70. Um, the way to alleviate the Moroi curse and to break it is to either A, just leave and fire up another contract or you can take sanity pills, okay? Um, but yeah, so those those two ghosts are the only two ghosts that I know of that have uh, special spear box interactions. Um, every other ghost just kind of gives you basic basic responses. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the cream of the crop, baby. This is the tier three spirit box. And right before uh, I want to go into kind of showcasing this a little bit, uh, I want to touch on what uh, classic gamer girl in my chat uh, mentioned, uh, who actually has more hours in the game than I do, but uh, she brought up a good point. So with the Moroi spirit box response, if you are placed on the, under the Moroi curse, your sanity will drain even if you're standing in the light. Under normal circumstances, if you're standing in the light on a small map, your your sanity is not going to drain at all. Uh, if you have the more red curse, even in the light, your sanity is just gonna just gonna drop. Okay, you guys just saw that, right? The the picture frame dropped. We're gonna assume that this is the ghost area. So, this is the tier three. Okay, it's literally don't be fooled by all of these buttons. There's there's nothing special about it. It's literally just a normal sphere box, but it looks so cool. And just like all the other tier three items, the interaction uh, radius is much higher, so you got an easier chance to get spear box evidence. So where are you? Are you here? Are you close? Are you friendly? See, it's just it's just easier for the ghost to like respond because it's got a higher interaction radius as well as it's just it's just better because like the audio is clearer and yeah. So, dude, I'm telling you, tier three is is your bread and butter, baby, for for spear boxes. So if you want to know how to get the tier three spear box very fast and level up to get to that, check out this video right here to check out my XP farming strategy. Or if you want to watch the next episode where we cover the thermometers, you can uh, click the playlist that also just popped up on screen. Okay, so uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.